Hello friends! I am Omnisai here in my basement lair once more with another video for you. This one is one of those fun unboxing videos I enjoy doing every now and again. Uh, I like to do these because they give me an opportunity to present stuff that's, that's out and available uh, for you to get, or just kind of showing off some of what may be possible with things like Kickstarter. In this case, though, what I have is much more accessible than some Kickstarter that you know, it would be too late for someone to sign up for. Um, so, a while ago, I did a kind of a reveal video of some miniatures that had come out. Uh, they were made out of cast metal and painted. Uh, this one, these were from the Harry Potter series, so this is uh, Seeker Draco Malfoy. As you can see, the colors are nice. Um, this is Elvis Dumbledore. The colors are decent. Poses aren't too bad. Detailing is... Uh, not so great. Not, not great. Um, but on the other hand, it is pretty obvious to see who everyone is. Uh, and scaling-wise, they're not too bad. Uh, for instance, this is, uh, the... What's the... A fire... Fire Wizard. I can't remember the exact miniature's name, but comparing the two, Dumbledore and we can see they're about the same size. The metal miniatures are scaled a little bit higher, or Dumbledore is just that much taller. I'm comparing him to Malfoy, who at this time is a teenager, a gangly teenager, but to scale, a little bit bigger. So it's it's within reason. Um, certainly there are other sets of miniatures that are uh, uh, equally large. For instance, here's Dumbledore and Gandalf. A few times outside of epic rap battles of history that you're going to see these two stacked side by side. And they're the same size, really. Maybe appropriately so. So, this is of course Gandalf from the uh, Lord of the Rings Hero Clicks game. And uh, speaking of which, here is a... Mm-hmm. What are you? You are an M you're an Ember. Again, the hero clicks scale is about the same. So they're definitely usable for for uh, D and D miniatures, and again, the finish on these, um, all of the Harry Potter ones were just kind of thrown into a uh, a bin where I have my wizards. So I've got Harry in there and, and, and so on. Um, they've got the brooms and everything, so that works. Um, but I've, I've never really used them. I got them because I thought they were cool and I wanted to do a quick review on them. And since then, they've come up with a lot. They have characters from Street Fighter series. I know they've got uh, the Masters of the Universe series, which, again, many of those could work quite well for Dungeons & Dragons as well. They came out with a set for DC Heroes as well as Marvel. In fact, the Marvel one is kind of tempting me. It's $30, I believe, roughly. And it has a I think about 25 or 30 characters. Maybe about 20. But still, it's a good haul of metal miniatures. And maybe it's even 40, but still a good deal. Per miniature, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. The only downside to these is that while the... The, the posing is fine. Uh, the, the 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 metal is is solid. Uh, these are not frail. I, I'm not really worried about throwing them around. And the finish on them is not easy to chip. I mean, these have these still look just as good as the day I threw them in. But now <laughs> they're bringing Dungeons and Dragons into these as well. Proper Dungeons and Dragons figures. And I got myself a set. There are several groups, including some that are just heroic characters. For instance, one that has uh, Drist, Doerden, as well as some other characters. And they have one that features a red dragon. Now, I, this one ex interested me the most, of the Beholder and uh, Four Heroes. One of which is Minsk, the large ranger, uh, and uh, I suspect Boo. Yeah, I can see Boo on his shoulder. Boo is his giant miniature space hamster. But I'm going to open this up, show you what it is, so you can kind of get an idea. This was $10. So, 
Okay, opens up pretty easily. It was only taped shut. And looking at the figures, we're, we're going to stay away from the, the main show at first. First of all, I kind of I like the posing. The, the backdrop and everything is kind of neat. And they are wired in. Now, the beholder is not metal. The beholder is plastic. And it is held rigidly on this plastic pedestal. Quite well mounted. Does feel a little flimsy. So you're going to want to be careful with this. But this is... He's very happy to see you. And as you can see, it's clearly a beholder with all of his eyes angled forward. So he is prepared to defend himself for attack. He's got the, the, the look of anger on his face, which is good for, for monsters. Even though that garish, toothy grin... Well, he's clearly talking or taunting the, the characters. Now this is one, because of the way that it's molded and painted, the, the painting on this one is actually quite good. Uh, the color is nice. That This aqua blue, metallic aqua blue, is, is cool for a creature that is an aberration. Uh, you could believe that this comes from the dark dreams of someone uh, from the same realm that might have spawned Cthulhu. Um, it looks utterly alien and pretty disgusting, which is great for a beholder. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite beholders that I've seen, and I don't have very many. Uh, the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures uh, has an excellent, excellent beholder, but I haven't painted it yet. Uh, the mold for that one is all spiky and, and, and creepy looking. This one, not as much, but still very cool. I like it a lot. Okay, let's get on to the other ones. This would be Minsk. And there's a little boo on his shoulder. Now this is a problem with the detailing. For the most part, the large fields, like at the back of his cloak, the kind of buff color of his of his waistcoat uh, for his armor, fine. Little, you know, lacking in any kind of, you know, I would really want to see this dry brush to, to add a little breakup so it doesn't look quite so shiny. His arms are shiny, but at the end, you know, they're flesh colored enough. And the tattooing slash painting he's got on his face, you can see it. He has no eyes, really. That's detailing that um, they really didn't, they don't go to that level on these. So if you want to add uh, that level of detailing, you could be forgiven for doing so, certainly, if you've got a steady hand. Uh, these, they're, I mean, they have little pupil dots. It's not bad. It's not terrible. But uh, obviously one that's painted by somebody who knows what they're doing is going to come off as better. And because of the, the finish and everything on this, I don't know if you can strip this. I don't, don't know that you'd really want to do it most of the time. But in this case, you know, this one actually is, is better detailed than the Harry Potter ones, which frequently don't even have uh, much of an attempt at eyes. Some have, have brow they have brows, but you know, their eyes themselves are, are nearly absent. The uh, Wiz Kids uh, D and D figures are much much better uh, painted with, with eyes and pupils and such. Then let's see who do we go to next? That was Minsk Human Ranger and Boo. You could barely see Boo on the shoulder. I should have I should have pulled out the uh, Wiz Kids uh, D and D line of Minsk and Boo to compare them side by side. Maybe I'll do that at some point, um, but I'm not going to do it now. Then we have you are an Elven Bard, an Elven Bard with a black guitar. Black is rarely associated with God. Terrible today. Rarely associated with uh, instruments like that. So it's kind of. Eh. Unless, of course, it was magical or exceptional in some way. Again, the, the facial features aren't too bad. Hair's all slicked back. Same kind of nice, well, it's metallic-y coat. But um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, really, really shiny miniatures. I prefer them to be a bit more matte. 
But this, again, coloration-wise, it's a unified theme and not bad. I would have preferred a little bit more flashy colors for a bard. This is definitely more low-key, and he has no visible weapons on him, relatively small amounts of gear. So, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the greatest mold I've ever seen. I, 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 I wish they would have painted the instrument a different color than just flat black over everything. But considering all of his other clothes are browns and shades of brown, eh, it's, it's all right, I suppose. Now we have a tiefling paladin. I'm going paladin heavy here. Uh, our tiefling has a flail. And because she has a solid cloak over her back, and you know, again, not a lot of detailing required there, they don't need to have a tail that sticks out. It just curls up against the inside of her cloak that you can see basically kind of painted there. Uh, she has a flail, which is not a common weapon uh, in many molds, which I can appreciate. And there's not a lot of tiefling miniatures out there that are, that are you know, showing anything other than, I think warlocks are by far the most common, uh, maybe a, a rogue or two. But a, a tiefling paladin, a lot of people really like playing the counterculture. And uh, this, is, she looks like she is ready to go and smack somebody. No shield, although her arm is raised and you could probably attach a shield if you wanted to. Um, it would have been nice if she was dangling a holy symbol, like she was in mid-cast. Um, no visible holy symbol on her either to give you any indication that she's a paladin. I only have the say-so of the uh, outside of the packaging for that. But, um, you know, it's, a, it's another tiefling, which is great. It's a strong female character. She looks like she is ready to go beat somebody. I would say it probably looks more like a tiefling fighter, you know, but it's, it's perfectly fine. The, uh, the head of the, the flail is, is on the, the chonky side. It's, it's pretty big. Uh, gener generally, flails weren't massive. They were reasonably sized, and a lot of times they had multiple ones to increase the, the, the thresh area. But um, but all in all, it's, it's, it's a nice figure. I don't mind that at all. I like the, the skin tone, the horns. Um, they, the, the tail curling around the inside of the cape is, or cloak, is actually a good way of dealing with uh, the tieflings having extra bits sticking out that could easily... Uh, get bent or rubbed or, or severed. And then I think we're going to have a visitation from magic in this one. Right? Here's magic. She, uh, she's she been missing us a bit, so it's kind of hard to um, ignore a cat who wants uh, attention desperately. So I trust that you'll forgive this little intrusion, but she makes it worth it. Don't you, kitty? Don't you? So, I'm a huge animal lover, in case you haven't been able to tell, and, uh, yeah, she's my kitty, that's for sure. Okay, you're going to let Daddy review the last figure? Now, if people like these, uh, this, this unboxing reveal, I'll get the other sets. Uh, there's nothing that really I find uh, you know offensive or anything about these, but um, I wanted this one for the Beholder. I do like the Beholder, and I don't really have enough Beholders. You can always have more. Uh, so we come to the Half-Orc Paladin. And again, this is a nice pose. Um, again, a little bit open, and, and the sword dip down is not the way that I would want to be in a fight. Um, his shield is swung out to the side, which is useless for defending yourself. He does not look like he is getting ready to, to get into a brawl. And this is one I would definitely touch up myself. Uh, first of all, it's got the gauntleted hand. I believe that's Torm's uh, holy symbol, which I'm fine with. We're accepting that this is in the Forgotten Realms because they also have Drist and Minsk. So uh, a, a half-orc paladin is fine. A Torm would be a great uh, god to follow if you are playing that. Um, the color of the cloak, I'm, I'm fine with. It's something other than black or red, or dark red or brown. The, the buff color is kind of nice. Um, he's wearing sensible plated armor, the, the pauldrons, every part of him is covered well, except no helmet. But that's how you tell he's a half-orc. 
Um, he's got the nice lantern jaw, bit of a bit of a beard going on there. Uh, his hair is in a ponytail that runs down his back. I'm I'm good with that detail. Uh, he has kind of the uh, greenish grayish skin of the half orc to show his heritage, and the pointed ears kind of swept back. Um, sword is your standard uh, broadsword, longsword. So, um, again, your, your standard cruciform sword, nothing, nothing too offensive about that. He looks pro plenty tough. Uh, the fact that he, his clothes are all the same color. Uh, I like it when their cloaks are a little different color than their, in this case, his, uh, over, over garment, his over tunic, uh, that would cover everything. Um, there's no sign of any other composite materials, no leather, no, no metals outside of the plates of his armor, which is a detail that most people who paint like to do. He has a belt, but it's just swabbed over with the same color. This one really does kind of cry out for a little bit better detailing by, you know, somebody else. Um, I'm not sure how, uh, it would look with a touch of acrylic over. But I think if you uh, if you continue to put a clear coat over the top of it, after adding a little acrylic, I don't know how that would look. But I would definitely go with uh, lighter colored leather uh, for the strapping down here for the breech. Um, yeah, he's he's clearly got some straps going on here, but it's all kind of covered up by the paint. Um, there's actually the. Uh, uh, planchet discs on his chest. Those are all painted the same color as the rest of his, his tunic and cloak. So there's opportunities here, clearly, that you could do. On the other hand, it's a finished painted product that I could just put on the table right now and people are going, okay, it's an orc. He's pretty half orc. It's pretty tough. And uh, he would do just fine. And clearly I have more than enough painting projects that I'm not going to worry about touching these guys up. This would be a last... Uh, order of priority. So this gives me three functioning adventurers at about it's like it's like buying three functioning or four functioning adventuring characters for 250 each which is roughly a decent going rate. Uh, if you get the blind boxes for the D&D miniatures they're quite a bit more expensive than that and throwing in the beholder for free. I would have almost been tempted to pay you know eight dollars for the beholder by himself. And getting the other four metal miniatures on top of that is very cool. I'm very happy with the set. I look forward to using that miniature to bedevil my players uh, at some point in the future. And uh, the other figures just add on to the breadth of what my players have access to in terms of heroes or what I can bring in as NPCs in a fantasy game. And not even necessarily D&D. &D. They are mm, generic enough that I could put them in any real fantasy setting. They don't exclusively have to be uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Although Minsk is recognizable enough, they go, oh, it's Minsk. He's even got the, the he's got Boo on his shoulder. Um, if they noticed and cared. And uh, as far as, you know, the other figures, I having more tieflings is nice. I know some people really like tieflings. In the last group that I ran uh, in public, there were four tieflings in a group of 10, 10 to 11. That's quite a bit, even though one player eventually flipped. But, you know, people clearly like that idea for a race. Either they're attracted to the powers that the tieflings have, which is not, they're not inconsequential, or... They just like the idea of kind of an edgier character who's got some baggage and uh, want to go forward and make the best of it, despite the fact that they've got this haunted past. Or maybe they're more attractive because of the haunted past. Hard to say. But all in all, happy with those figures and happy to show them to you. If you enjoyed this, let me know. Leave a comment. Leave a thumbs up. I'll, even a thumbs up, I'll consider tacit approval that you like this. But if you uh, want to see the full selection, I have no problem getting those. Uh, the only one I'm really kind of standoffish about, honestly, is the Red Dragon. Uh, that pack's a little more expensive. I think it's like $15. The dragon's just too shiny. And I've got lots of dragons already. I don't really need another red. Uh, unless we're going to completely reenact the Rise of Tiamat and throw multiple dragons at the party at one time, which I'm not looking forward to doing. Um... I, I don't really see a need to take out any more than what I already have. 
And like I said, it's too shiny. I would have to uh, matte coat that thing just to, to bring it within reason. So, thank you very much. I will see you next time, and I've got plenty more to show off. So, stay tuned. I'll be back. Thank you, and farewell.